I will be heading to Cornell University for my Masters in Engineering Management in fall of 20. Our counselors are like Johari, so Johari ko sone ki kiemat pata hoti hai. It was the only counseling company that did not tell me to go for a particular university. Best investment of my life. I partied with my roommates over there. When I came here, we went to the Taj. You, you can't get everything. You have to give up on something for something else. Don't overestimate or underestimate your profile. Whatever you have done, you have done to the best of your ability. It's like my dream come true. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Atharva Thodge. I am from Mumbai, and I completed my computer science engineering from SRM Institute of Science and Technology. So I'm currently working at TCS Digital in Ahmedabad as a systems engineer. My study abroad journey actually started right in my class 10th itself because I completed my secondary education from IGCSE curriculum, which is affiliated to the Cambridge University. That is where I realized the kind of education that is present in in countries like the UK, US, is very much different from India. It's more of application based and much less theoretical. Therefore, I was always interested into going for education abroad. During the research for this master's degree, I realized that I could get a holistic education of not only management but also engineering, which was not present in India. So I could see that I did not have to choose right at this moment if I had to go into the technical. side or the management side i could actually go ahead study and then according to my interest choose whatever fits to my interests post my masters so that's where i found master's education to be uh, advantageous uh, my journey actually of choosing engineering management was a bit different because i was initially very much interested in mba but i realized that going for an mba would require about 5 to 6 years of experience when it comes to universities uh, in the us and i did not want to have that kind of a gap between my bachelor's and my masters therefore i started searching for ms courses and a but obvious co- question comes on why not computer science why engineering management but that is where i realized that computer science would only keep me narrowed down to the job prospects of computer science itself whereas engineering management gives me a perspective of both uh engineering as well as management so if if i am interested i could also get into a software development role and if i am interested i could also get into a business role like a business analyst or a product manager while getting a computer science masters may not give me the uh, correct validation of education and the correct education for a product manager's role but an engineering management education will definitely give me that therefore to have many more options post my masters i chose to change my stream from computer science to engineering management So when I thought of uh, getting into a master's course my first step was to speak to a lot of people on LinkedIn and post speaking to them I realized that all of them had a very structured way of doing things and when I asked them how did they have that idea they told me that they went to counselors and that's how they got a structured way of things therefore i realized that i would want to have that as well because although today we have every information on google and youtube but you cannot have a flow chart that is present for you so it it's not a personalized information for you on google or youtube so that is where i realized that i would want to have a counselor who would help me out for my particular profile and secondly uh, i always say that a counselors are like johari so johari ko sone ki kiemat pata hoti hai so even if you have a good profile if you do not have the right person to tell you that you have a good profile and you can go ahead and use this profile to apply to universities like the cornell or the ivy leagues then there's no use of having a good profile so i believe counselors are really the ones who tell you how good you are how bad you are and they give you a blunt picture of your own profile so that's where counseling really helped me out So uh, I believe the first consequence of not taking a counseling service is you do not have a timeline. So I remember uh, my first application was to NYU and it was on 1st of December. So I remember getting calls from my counselor on 30th of November itself that where are we on the on the application? How much have we done with? How much has the editor done? So you know these things are not present with the people who are doing it solo and especially who are working because you have 10 tasks already of your work. plus you have to think of your own master's journey 
so this is where i think counselors help you and they they make sure that you know that okay i have a deadline on 1st of december i have to complete this the second consequence i believe of going solo is those small details that you may miss out of from your sop you may miss out from your lors that is where counselors experience comes by so you know uh, possibly for my sop at dartmouth one of the colleges uh, that i applied to had a very different and a very uh, uh, a very unique tone to it than what i sent to cornell and nyu so this is where i believe those small nitty gritties those small details is where counselors help you and is where you may face a consequence going solo So I spoke to about five to six counselors. Yorkit was one of them. The first reason why I came to Yorkit was uh, it was the only counseling uh, company that did not tell me to go for a particular university. The person that I spoke to before uh, enrolling to the Yorkit Premium Service, she told me that you choose the university. We will only tell you if you are good enough for it. and if not we will give you an option but we are not telling you that you will have to apply to these two universities or these three universities first one was that second one was uh, yorkit had a unique thing wherein i could choose two countries taking my counselor's advice i did not go for australia but initially i was also about to apply to australian universities too so that is where the expertise of the counselors came by and that is where uh, the feature of yorkit was that i could apply to two universities but again taking one more advantage of yorkit into consideration was that the counselors did not let me apply to australia they told me that you are good enough for united states and you should be applying over there only so i applied over there the third feature of yorkit that i found was the pricing because i did find counselors who were way too cheaper than yorkit i did find counselors who were way too expensive than yorkit but this particular price point was such that i found it was worth taking the risk and i could see the reward coming by It's been great, honestly. I mean, I don't believe in the results because I do believe in the process itself, and I really enjoyed the process. Results, of course, when you get good results, you feel happy. But the process itself was so good because it was structured, it was well timed. I don't remember nagging my editors or my counselors to ask for things. They would tell me things upfront. My editors would send me SOPs, LORs in a few days, and they would be really good. I had a really great experience with Yorkit. Not only because I got results, but also I believe that having that kind of a connection with your counselors and your editors, wherein you could have a call with them, you you can understand what their perspective is. it really helped me throughout my journey so it was great with you okay celebration i i partied with my roommates over there when i came here we went to the taj taj mahal palace to have dinner and yeah we had fun yeah i did send sweets for uh, my parents here at home because i stay in ahmedabad so i got it delivered for them over here the first admit that i got was nyu and honestly the thing with these admits and these emails is you get it at odd times in india So it was like I remember it was around six six fifteen in the morning when I just and I had the habit of checking my emails every day because it was like NYU is going to release their admits in one one and a half months. So I kept on checking. That's when I got an email that there is an update in the status. So it was a bit of an anxious about a minute or two when I could put my credentials and I could check what the update was because it was not congratulations. And then when I opened the email, I just read the word congratulations and I called up my parents because. I did not care about what I was I mean what all I got I was just like congratulations I have to tell them that I have gotten that was a really candid moment for me because I was honestly not expecting to get into uh, the top universities while having a 10 month experience so the way I started my journey and the first admit that I got it was it was a miraculous moment for me and then for UIUC USC USC of course I was at home and that's when I got the email that's i mean i shared that moment with my mom at that moment itself and for cornell i remember calling up my dad and telling him that now you are the father of a son who's going to an ivy league so that was something that uh, that was very precious for me because getting an admit and getting an admit from an ivy league was an unimaginable thing for me just 4 months ago while i was applying for all these colleges So all these admits were I mean I was very ecstatic and excited to get all of them. A uh, food festivities family <laughs> Mumbai uh, the people that I've spoken to are already in the US they always say that tons of things to celebrate over there but you have very less people to celebrate them with. So that is something that I'll miss about India but of course you you can't get everything so 
you have to give up on something for something else so first advice would be start early give your exams get done with your gre with your toefl ielts whatever you're giving because not having that particular uh, tension and sorting all of the exams out really helps you to focus on the sop and the lor so because when you apply to these top universities top 10 top 15 universities generally say a toefl score of 105 110 is expected out of you so if you already have those things sorted then you can look for sop and you can have unique things over there secondly i believe that this investment in the counselors i took a lot of time in deciding on your kit i shouldn't have because this particular investment may give you a return on investment that is unimaginable so you do not have to think on that whatever your gut feeling says you have to go ahead and choose and i'd say choose your kit but this this particular uh, decision should be made quickly so that you and your counselors and your editors have ample amount of time to discuss and work thirdly i would say don't overestimate or underestimate your profile don't think of yourself just because you have a 9 cgpa just because you have a good toefl score and a gre score you may just go into a stanford maybe not let your counselors decide that and on the other hand don't underestimate your profile as well don't think that you have not done enough so when we started this particular uh, exploring this option the first thing came to our mind was uh, who is supporting us because this journey uh, has a lot of steps to complete and then we found out that we need somebody who has done uh, who is doing this every year with a lot of good students and that's how we started exploring options available for consultancy and then we shared the prospects of your consultancy and we found that uh, the lot of proven track record shared by your team and then he spoke to your counselor and he said that i think this is the uh, best return on investment i can think and uh, this this decision was left to him and he chose that practically it's like my dream came come true i always aspired to be part of ivy league or something in my life and uh, he made it that's what i can say <laughs>